Good afternoon, everyone. I am attorney Danielle Patterson, candidate for state rep in the 190th. For those who don't know, that's West Philly, baby. Calling all my friends from Spruce Hill, Cedar Park, Haddington, Dunlap, Mill Creek, Palton, West Palton, Parkside, East Parkside, uh, Belmont, Cathedral Park, Carroll Park, uh, Winfield Heights. Don't forget about my friends over in Lower uh, East Falls. So specifically, that is East Allegheny, sorry, Allegheny West and Lehigh West. I am attorney Danielle Patterson, and I am here today to talk about this fabulous world of real estate as we know it, because boy, have things changed. I've got joining me today, David Foster from Integrity Real Estate, our um, realtor extraordinaire. Hey, Dave. Hey, Danielle. How are you? I'm great, but not as great as you. I mean, I want to be sitting outside with fabulous trees behind me and stuff. Instead, I've been, you know, stuck in social media studios since 7.30 a.m. Hardworking young lady. Hardworking young lady. But, you know, it's not about what you do. Sometimes it's how you do it because, you know, I clearly need to step up my plan. But, you know, on these uh, hard West Philly streets, as soon as I step outside, somebody come talk to me. So can't go out there. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But it's like uh, I'm filming. I'm filming. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Well, it is always a pleasure to have you on with us today. And I reached out to you because so much of things, the things that we've talked about, about real estate have come to fruition. So here we are now. And the governor didn't agree and sign the House bill. As a matter of fact, he vetoed the House bill, which would have made real estate agents and essential uh, essential workers, basically, and exempted you all. And instead, he gave a new set of guidelines. Uh, for realtors to function under, and it's very limiting to say the least. Absolutely. Uh, the COVID-19 business update for real estate came out May 19th. That's actually what it's called? I just yeah. read it. It's the COVID-19 business update for real estate. Okay. It came out by 19. And folks actually didn't even know. First, they didn't know um, that realtors were not essential workers. And you and I talked about that weeks ago and yeah. um, and why you should be exempted. And so what's happened during the course is that folks started to realize, realize that they were impacted because uh, real estate was not exempted. People just thought, oh, well, you know, you can't go buy a house. And they didn't realize that we had students who were stranded in housing and couldn't find new housing. Mm -hmm. We had folks who were stranded in bad relationships, couldn't get out of one, you know, couldn't get out of a bad home environment into a new one because technically they couldn't even show apartments or new yep. housing. That we had folks who uh, had moved up on the uh, subsidy list who couldn't go and actually uh, locate new property and move into it. So there was a lot that was actually being impacted by that order. Yes, it was. Uh, Section 8, we're not doing any inspection. So if you had a Section 8 voucher and you was ready to move, you could not move at all. I didn't know Section 8 wasn't doing um, inspections. I just no. knew that they weren't able to do the showings. Okay. And, uh, so before you move into a Section 8 house, the Section 8 inspector is supposed to come out and they was not doing any Section 8 inspections. I think they just started like maybe like May 6th or 7th or something like that. Hey, Joshua, Joshua. So um, one of our new real estate moguls, we're very proud of her, um, deciding that she's going to flip houses. You know, uh, Joshua, Joshua. So I'm going to use that since the tag that's on there. Um, it's very interesting because she is a union carpenter. Really? That's yes. Awesome. I know, right? That's amazing. Uh, I, 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 I love that networking right there. I'm definitely going to reach out to there Joshua. You go. Joshua. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, she is a union carpenter. And, um, and I, you know, when I, we first talked about it, I was just like, you go, girl, because me and a nail and a hammer and none of this, the cutting stuff, <laughs> I'm like, y'all really don't want to see this. Okay. I'm just going to tell y'all. Um, I, I would be at YouTube University like you talk about all the time, Dave. And, you know, we can talk about some of that, too. Oh, but on man. Time, 
because <laughs> we're going to talk about why we should use real realtors um, who have some experience with these properties instead of the folks from YouTube University. So we can definitely talk about that, especially uh, since, you know, Miss Joshua Joshua has joined us today with her fabulousness. So I just, you know, and, and actually, you know, I'm going to just tell you, that's actually kind of sexy. It really is like, you know, if you just really want to talk about something that's like kind of giving off woman confidence and those kind of things to say that she's out there doing these things uh, that are considered men's work because that, you know, very much so even in our society is still considered men's work. You know, I'm saying I appreciate you being, you know, a trailblazer for us, young lady. I'm just going to say that. It's greatly appreciated. You don't have many uh, people, a lot of women in that uh, mm -hmm. category. I like to see everybody in those male dominated fields. I'm one of them, one of the very few actual uh, catastrophic loss women and specifically black women trial lawyers. So I definitely get it surrounded by men all the time. And, and it's always a unique, unique kind of um, feeling and opportunity. So let's get back to the COVID-19 um, business update. So where did it come from? Who actually did the business update? Uh, it actually came, the guidelines are coming from Governor Wolf and it was passed on to the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors and then passed down to us. So it's basically guidelines that we have to adhere by moving forward whether you show in um, a house or going to close in, there are specific things that they want. Um, for example, of course, wear a mask. Okay. So that's part of the retail stores. So it's passed down to us. Um, when showing a house, so for example, I'm showing you a house, you want to bring your mom, your dad, your cousin, um, your uncle. It's none no, of that. So, okay. It's none so of that. So it's none of that at all. So that was actually what I saw was the most interesting and a little controversial uh, was that you couldn't bring everybody. It's um no more than two people in addition to the realtor. Two people. OK, now I understood, you know, we can't be having an open house in the middle of the pandemic. But, you know, uh, a family wants to go and live in a house. Right. And it's it's the biggest purchase. Most two of us are people. going to make. Two people. To people. It's the biggest people purchase that most of us are going to make. And I, I totally understand it. And, you know, we have, but now this is the other side of it. We have virtual tours. We have mm -hmm. video tours. We have um, FaceTime. There are other ways that your family can see the house, whether mom and dad is there and you want to show the kids. There are other ways, pictures, video, 3D models. There are more than one way to do it. One thing I like about COVID-19 is making businesses step into the 21st century. Yes. So, you know, when I was a kid, we were going to meet George Jetson, right? And we had all these ideas about what the future was going to be like with flying cars and they were going to be self-propelled, you know, the three hour work week. Remember that when George was like, oh my God, I've been at work for three hours. And he was like, these three hour work weeks are killing me, you know, and that's kind of what I thought the future was going to be like. And then we were stuck. We had the technology, but people resisted all the time. So I know one of the one of the things that was interested, they're mm -hmm. moving towards um, digital notaries. Yes. So and very so, big, yes. very big. When in the law practices, people. So, OK, so when I came through law school at Villanova, I was actually a member of something that they call Technology 2000. That was actually what they called our class. We were an entire, we were a national prototype. So I started law school in 1997 and graduated in 2000. And we were the first class that everybody was given a laptop. Villanova had just done big upgrades. So we had the little ports at every chair. So you could, you know, um, automatically, uh, you know, dial in, I guess for no other way to put it into the network. So it wasn't a dial in, it was the, it was a ethernet cable. So they were fast. Um, mm -hmm. We were the first ones that had smart boards. And I remember like they would bring other schools were coming to Villanova like, wow, this is fascinating. And, you know, we had uh, they we didn't have the um, the digital books yet, but, you know, we had all the notes were digitized and it was really, really fascinating. 
So what happened? That was when Lexus and Westlaw, that's how you do online, you know, legal research. We mm-hmm. told you went online with it. And so, but, and that was all great. And you want to know when it wasn't great? What? As soon as it was time for me to actually go be a lawyer, the problem was we were technology 2000, but everybody else was down here. So here we come. And in most law firms, they were still using Corel Word Perfect. So we spent all this time getting, you know, all this stuff together. And then it was like, we were like in a foreign country it, or mm-hmm. like this. I remember a partner said to me, oh, well, um, uh, bring your girl in uh, so she can do dictation. Step one, who's my girl? <laughs> Step Ooh. two, what is this dictation you speak of? He's like, oh, he said, we're going to dictate a letter. And I'm like, you, so, and I mean, I remember this. I remember coming into my office and they had a little dictaphone and he's sitting there like, uh, stop and period. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I was like, you know, I can actually do this quicker than you like calling her in here to do it and then printing it out and then reading it and then giving it back to her. And he looked at me like I was nuts. And so he used to come into my office like, what is going on in your office? And I'm like, work. And he didn't even have a computer on his desk. (laughs) He's like, what? So I had literally everything in my office on the desk ready. You know, I had mountains of the research. The printer was, he's like, what are you doing? And he's like, we have paralegals for that. We have law clerks for that. We have assistants for that. And I'm just like... So you want me to unlearn everything that I learned for three years so that in a world that you're more comfortable with. And so for lawyers, what I saw was so many of the more old school, because technically, you know, so I was the beginning of that. So I'm too much more technologically savvy even than most folks who are at my practice level. But, Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, because that's how we, you know, we came through that program. But I saw so many folks struggle with uh how to get your documents scanned like they were not ready for this new world we had not scanned documents we were still like keeping stuff under lock and key in the office we had not like there were things and it wasn't just my firm or anybody else's firm i just you know i'm in 99 lawyer groups and everybody was having the same problem like well uh how do you how do you screen share well i'm trying to show it i'm like they're like we're trying to show a document we're like uh you can screen you can share the screen what do you mean share the screen i'm like so they can see what you can see like it was really and and like i said these are people who are my age these are not people who were significantly older mm-hmm. and the folks who were significantly older were just like i don't care i'm not learning that's really where it was so it it definitely taught us to um pivot it taught us that um the old ways aren't necessarily the best ways they can be good for you but you still got to know the new ways and so i'm excited about the digital notary i i really am because that's actually the one of the biggest problems even in law firms like we're trying to you know the the, the so now our offices are still going to be closed even if we're open we're not going to let anybody in in general because there are these rules about the buildings so how do you get things filed when you you know you need a signature and i know that you guys have that problem because everything that you guys do is heavily heavily regulated because we don't want fraudulent transfers absolutely so yeah. how is the digital notary working because you, you came on and told us about drive through uh <laughs> drive through notaries how's the digital notary working out the digital notary is pretty good it's usually part of the settlement it's not with my thing but i think is is something good to have we use docusign already um mm-hmm. Some banks do not allow DocuSign. They still want wet signatures, mm-hmm. which I totally Explain understand. A Explain yeah. a wet signature. Okay. A wet signature is actually where you, I have to email you the form, you print it out, you sign it, and give me the original document so I can send it back to the bank. A wet signature. Digital is e signature electronic signatures okay just you know a lot of times we're on here and because it's you know something we're using we got to make sure it's for the masses you're absolutely right so now um some banks are not accepting is that for your closings uh a lot of the documents that the bank may want signed they want wet signatures yes for the closing so how do you do that um usually have to send a notary there or they have to come in and practice social distancing how do you socially distance a signature 
um, you give it to them and they sign over there and then they leave out and pick it back up. That's how it is. In the middle of the pandemic, because I was being mad at the SBA people, <laughs> I was being mad at the SBA people. Specifically, I was being mad at Wells Fargo, the evil empire, and I'm going to just call them what they are, the evil empire, um, that I didn't want an accountant in the first place because they've done so many things to our people. Just And I'm like, y'all can see on the news what they've done with us for... Um, of what they've done with us for uh, loans that they won't give us and and home loans they won't you know how we were redlined and all those kind of things. But one of the things as part of one of the settlements is that they were making a commitment to uh, specifically um, MBE, so minority um, and women business enterprises. So I went and got an account a couple of years ago, and you know whatever whatever. Still feeling like okay, the evil empire, but you know, we're going somebody got to be the change, right? So here I am going to be the change. And you know, my my loan, my application never was processed for PPP through both phases, it never was processed. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to find me a small regional bank and it's going to be great and it's going to be fabulous. And um, so and because. Facebook be knowing. I don't know if y'all know. If you ever <laughs> looking for something, you know, everybody go just Google it. I don't Google it. Okay. The, there is a Facebook it, group. I just throw it on Facebook. Okay. There's a Facebook group for it. No, not you don't need the Facebook group. If you just put it on Facebook, first somebody gonna answer number one, and then they're gonna invite you to the group. So you don't need to search for the group. Okay. You can be like, uh, you know, red mix with white makes what? There's a face group for that, and somebody's gonna tell you. Okay, real quick, and I'm gonna give you the best example for me um back when trump first started with his detention camps and i was on my way um it was time for my big block party and it we were going to go shopping um uh for liquor and um we may or may not have gone to delaware <laughs> to go get this liquor no comment we may have you know my aunt was driving so it's technically not me i was just in the car but anyway, so we're riding by the air. So all of a sudden, there's all this traffic as we were trying to get on to 95. And we're like, what is going on? So it's like, you know, the middle of the week, like crazy. We're like, this was not a good idea. We thought we were going early enough. And I'm like, no. So we're trying to turn to KYW, trying to figure out what's all this traffic going on. And we're like, I'm Googling. And so she was like, I don't know. Maybe we should just go home. We should do this another day. We still got time. I'm like, okay, whatever. I was like, let me just put it on Facebook. Me. Yo, what's going on at the airport? 15 people came back. Oh, they doing the trick, the um, the detention order today, the day to day, they enforcing it at the airport. They taking them off the planes. I would have been figuring that out because for 25 minutes, I was on there listening to KYW on they loop. And I got a call. I got an answer in 3.3 seconds. Um, and very specifically, all these fabulous folks that I have brought to you, Kamari Ellis and David Foster and Deneen Waislick Pashukos and uh, Shar Thompson, all these fabulous folks I've brought you over the last 10 weeks, they're all on my Facebook page. Ricky Duncan, you know, Anton, they're all on my Facebook page. So sometimes when you have a question, if you just post it on my page, you're going to get an answer real quick because all the resources are over there. So I just want y'all to know that. So anyway, so I was like, okay. I was like, there's got to be a banker on my timeline. That's exactly what I said. There's got to be a banker on my timeline. Uh, I said, I want a small regional bank and I need somebody in business banking. It took 2.2 seconds, but I was immediately hooked up with Karanja Patterson, who I did not know had moved over to Wispis. And for those of you who don't know, Wispis um, merged with Beneficial. And who didn't have a Beneficial account? Who didn't have one? Y'all know that's where you put your five dollars every Friday when you were in school. So I was like, oh, so I did mobile transactions to open my account. That that was the entire point of this whole long story. And so he, we, we did the drive through banking to get my accounts open. He got everything ready. And then I drove through and, <laughs> and then signed it and sent it up the chute. And then it came back and it was like, here you go. Now you got business accounts and I hold to account and personal accounts. And it has been fabulous. So me and Whiskers are working right on out. But you want to know what has not been fabulous? Trying to close that Wells Fargo account. They fighting me too for nail. Now they want to give me everything in the world about this Wells. You can have the world if you just don't close this account. No, I'm out of here. I am so out of here. So wait a minute. <laughs> I'm PSFS old. Um, Jacqueline, let me tell you. So I said to my friend, he said, 
I said, oh, I got to go to Whispers. He was like, what? I was like, Whispers. He's like, what is this Whispers, Whispers you talk about? And I'm like, you see it. Everybody knows Whispers. And he's like, no, you don't. Uh, yeah, I was like, everybody knows Whispers. So he was like, no, I don't. I'm like, so I was like, all right, well, so I got to go to the bank, take you by the Whispers. And he was like, oh, WSFS. I was like, are you the only person who's never seen the commercial that you say it Whispers? So, you know. <laughs> So you don't say it like PSFS. <laughs> that's the, so that's the way that is. Um, here you go. Rob Rob Bridgeway is actually talking about the lawsuit. Um, last year, Philadelphia filed a similar lawsuit citing former employees who alleged the bank encouraged workers to push the use of higher cost loans to minorities. Baltimore and Miami have also accused Wells Fargo of discriminatory mortgage lending. That's exactly right, Rob. That's the reason I really didn't want the account there. But again, you got to be the change because not only that, there has been uh, there. They're actually the employees are filing lawsuits against Wells Fargo. There's actually two different um, class actions against them. And the other thing that Wells Fargo is doing is they fraudulently open accounts. So now there's all this protocol with being able to open accounts at Wells Fargo. And so now they're giving me all the red tape about closing my account at Wells Fargo. So, so that's the rest of that. But back to real estate um, uh, in, in the age of COVID. So because we didn't got all off on wet notaries and ask Facebook because y'all don't know. See, I turn on Facebook like it's the TV. All the time, people like, what you doing? I'm watching Facebook. <laughs> that's what I do. Like, let me get up. Let me find out what's going on. Let me watch Facebook. So um, and that's actually how I first learned from Facebook that the real estate was not considered essential, that they were not granted a waiver. And all I saw was starting to see all the horror stories about who it was impacting. So how have your clients been able to manage, Dave? Um, everyone is ready to get back out there. Um, one of the biggest things of us getting back to work is every time we have a client, we have to give them what's called the COVID-19 Health and Safety Acknowledgement Form. And it's basically a form that has my broker, my licensee, the address of the property you're going into. They have a series of questions that they ask. One of the questions is, in the past 14 days, um, have you been diagnosed with COVID-19? Okay. Yes or no? So we have to have all this. And it's actually, if I'm representing you as a buyer, I have liability to the seller and the seller's agent for taking you into their property. So they want to have everything documented. So back what back up. Okay, so they have liability to the sellers. I, I don't understand. Yeah. So I represent you. Yes. You're going to go buy house A. House mm -hmm. A is owned by Mr. John. Okay. You have COVID-19 and I take you into Mr. John house. Okay. You see how that could possibly be something big? Well, I think that's fabulous because we really should have more bases for lawsuits. I, you know, personally, I feel like we should have all the bases for lawsuits because we should protect these people's rights. Okay, I am here to fight for people's rights, and we have to make sure that we are not taking people's rights to sue away because y'all should know better. Okay, I'm just telling you, it's your fault. Well, you always want to protect yourself and your client. I represent the buyer, and I want to make sure that we have everything documented. Now. You got to do temperature checks on these folks because that's the part that was cracking me up. <laughs> uh, no, no temperature checks. <laughs> but there's a lot of other stuff. Um, one of the things they were saying, in-person activity. Um, I, I read somewhere and I was trying to find it where they were saying in between every showing, the seller should get in there and wipe everything down. Now, wait a minute. I actually had, let me see if I can get the, because I actually pulled it up because I was just exactly, like, wow, yeah. I, the research that I the most, most, okay. But on top of that, what's even more ridiculous is um, I really don't see everybody doing all this. So now, and it's like everything else with COVID-19, it's going to be those people that comply and then those folks that don't. Another you know, one was health screener before every in-person activity. That's why I asked, were you supposed to be out there um, taking temperatures? Uh, I don't think they want us doing the health screening. I think they want a professional doing it. Are you sure? Because really, I thought it was No, like I'm. it just said health screener before every in-person activity. Yeah, so here it goes. So 
Property staging is to be done ahead of time to avoid touching surfaces where possible and to clean all the surfaces that yes. have been touched between every showing. Yes. And then I saw that there was like a time limit on how long it could be in there and how many showings there could be. No, they want it staggered. So if I have a one o'clock appointment, I can't have another show until one thirty. Okay. So, and actually through our show and time appointment center is already set up in there that we have 30 second gaps in between. So if your appointment is at, let's say, uh, two, uh, 1230 and you leave at one 30 minute, you get in there, wipe everything down, clean it up. One thirty, we back to our business. And, and I just told y'all that my timeline is where all, all the resources are. So I'm going to give a little shout out here. Geneva Pittman, Brock and Burrow info for your cleaning company. Um, so I think that's fabulous. This is, a, again, we talk all the time about how we're going to find small businesses for our community. This is how we're going to find them, the ingenuity. Because honestly, professional cleaning service is about to be everything everywhere as we're starting to open up. And I would recommend anybody who has one of those cleaning companies, start reaching out to these small companies, these small businesses, get these contracts before these big companies come and start taking them. Cause that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I agree. So you would pay for the medical and the cleaning. Uh, Geneva, please. I'm sorry. Joshua, Joshua. I got to be <laughs> Joshua, Joshua. Tell me what you mean by that. What you mean by that? While we, while we continue, um, you know, and those are some of the ways that we're going to do that. You know, uh, crisis be, breeds ingenuity. You know, the, I remind everybody, the biggest company that we're relying upon in, in 2019, we're all born out of the 2009 um, crash. All of a sudden, hotels. So what happened? We got Airbnbs. Uh, okay, we couldn't find a cab. So what they do? Now we got Uber. Okay, um, we can't, you know, uh, no brick and mortar stores. I can't, I don't have access and I want to, you know, I want to have a fly stuff. Here come Amazon. And these companies are growing and, and you know, flourishing. So we got to say, get this cleaning company out of here, you know, out here because we're going to have need deep cleaning. The other thing that we're going to need, in addition to, the, to deep cleaning, hey, we got um, uh, Khalil Thomas, our uh, Easy Mobile Stick, who's doing uh, blood screenings and COVID screenings. He comes to your home to do them. Wow. Concierge service, baby. And I say there's going to be even more of that, especially as we social distance. There's less and less that we want to go do in a group. I agree. Uh, you know, <laughs> thank you, Willie. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we try to bring the people the information right where they are. We do. Um, you know, so those are the kind of things that we have to start thinking of. You know, uh, Joshua, Joshua talking about Geneva Pittman there. Reach out to these churches. They want to reopen more than anybody else. And yeah, we can have the, the church ladies cleaning the church, but we're going to need some deep cleaning in there. And how are we going to handle that? So that's all good stuff. Um, so Dave, I got to go back to this, the 30 minutes. So now let's say you integrity real estate, um, you are representing the buyer, you're representing me and you're going to go show yes. me a house, right? Yes. How do yes. we know that is there like, how do we know that somebody else is not already there? How do we know because, that it's been 30 minutes? Because we have what's called showing time. Showing time is our appointment center. So basically the appointment center will say, okay, your appointment is from one to one thirty. So you know I mean? is that like a universal thing? Like all realtors have that? It's not yes and no. It depends on who's representing you. Some people feel as though they want to pick up the phone every time someone calls, but I believe it's, you know, a, a new you day. You have new, new times. Exactly, exactly. Everything is connected here, right here. Everything well, you know what it sounds like? It also sounds like one of the things that we're going to need, if there's not an app for that, we need an app for that, not just so that, uh, you know, Integrity Real Estate has it, so that, you know, if you want to come see my property at 52, 52 Sycamore Lane, so I'm going to say that because everybody watched that while they were home, you know, on quarantine, it was what they was they was watching Tyler Perry Foolishness. So if you're on 52, 52 <laughs> Sycamore Lane, and we're trying to we're trying to sell that house, there should be an actual, you know, um, ma an, a, a map and calendar for that so that you can get in on your appointment slot to go to 52, 52 Sycamore Lane. 
So that way we'll have other folks who are not from Integrity Real Estate, you know, over there when I'm supposed to be there or too close together. We don't want to create situations where anybody has to wait. We don't want to lose a sale from aggravation because I don't know about you, but I'm easily aggravated. You have a question down there from Joshua. Joshua, I think it's a good question. Here you go. Let's see. Are we yeah. saying the seller would have to come out of their pocket for each and every cleaning after every showing? That would be costly. Oh, no, honey. The real is supposed to do the cleaning. That's what they're supposed to have done. <laughs> they, they, y'all, so they, you, when y'all see David, y'all ever seen one of David's um where he does the home showing? You ever see that? Because I watch him like I got some money and or I'm going to buy a house in Delaware because he's always like, is a, is a home in Delaware your dream? Here for only five million dollars, you can move to Smyrna, Delaware. I'm like, I'm not going there, but I'm I'm here to look at the pretty pictures. So, Dave, you're gonna have to show us cleaning. I want I better see you out here, not just looking. I better see you out here wiping down some rails. Don't forget to wipe down the rails. You know, people touch them, okay? They went up and down the steps. The railings and the doorknobs, very, very that's important. Right, that's right. You got to get all of them. Willie wants us to know that you are a great realtor. Yes. Thank uh, you. Thank Willie, you, Willie. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I told you, if you're looking for the, you're looking for the resources, they're right here on uh, Danielle Patterson for 190th, or actually even on my personal page, Danielle Patterson, because they're connected. Yes, Joshua, Joshua, you, yes, you, you about to out here be doing the most. So not only will you be cutting down trees, you got to go to her page sometime, because she was out there building a she shed last week, or was that this week? I don't know, but she was building a she shed. Really? Herself? Yeah, she was out there building a she shed. And yes, wow. she was. And she was recycling the wood from the trees that she took down for the she shed. I'm trying to tell oh, you. Oh, that's awesome. I'm trying to tell you, okay? And I was sitting there, like I told you, I watch Facebook like it's TV. So I was sitting right there like, oh, look at that. That's like <laughs> the she shed is one of the must-have items for the house now. You know, we have the man cave and we have to have the she shed. So we have to have both. Do these people live in West Philly? Because my house ain't that big. I can't have all this stuff now. It's funny. It was a post that uh, was put up, I think, yesterday. It was a property. Uh, it was in West Philly somewhere. It was on a market. Right down the street from me. I know. The, the $400,000 the $400, house. So, the $400,000 house down the street from me. And <laughs> everyone asking questions. And I think they're good, valid questions. Well, Who's going to buy their property? And I just go back to the age of supply and demand. If it was not no supply for a $400,000 house in West Philly, believe me you, the investors will not be buying and rehabbing these, pro these properties and putting them on the market. So, yes, people are buying these houses. I sold the property at 27th and Master. It's two blocks from the projects. Mm -hmm. For four hundred and seventy thousand, I believe. So people are buying them. Oh, absolutely, they are. I mean, I, I don't, I don't knock it at all. Not that I just said I don't know where there's room for this man cave and this she shed. I know that, which is also why I work so hard in my community to make sure that people know about the real estate tax rebate, about the senior tax rebate, about um, the. Uh, the remittance on taxes um, for people who owe back taxes, the amnesty plans, because what I don't want is for people to lose houses that they don't know are so valuable. Do not call up and then the people with the 1-800 we buy homes. Do not. No, no. So, you know what? Another thing also, Danielle, mm -hmm. I was speaking to uh, someone who works at uh, the community development CDC center. Um, we was on a conversation about the $10,000 grant, but she mm -hmm. started talking about, the foreclosures. She said, I'm getting a lot of people coming in about foreclosures. Yes, the courts are closed, but it doesn't stop all of the, the papers being sent. And I said, you know, I send a lot of people directly to you guys because I'm short sale foreclosure certified. I'll help you sell it if you want to sell it. But I also try to say, if you want to save your house, the city of Philadelphia has a lot of resources. Yeah. You yeah. just have to reach out give them all your information and let them work with you. Don't just stick your head in the ground and think it's going to go away because it's not. Seek professional help. Philadelphia has excellent resources for people trying to save their house. Zahira, I'm going to lay She said, with you, Penn, 
um, it's possible for that price to be at 52nd of Cedar. That's definitely high commodity. Let me tell you something, right? So I done lived in the same neighborhood my whole life, in the same two block radius, okay? I moved down the street from my parents and then around the corner from my parents. Really, I went from 55th Street to 53rd Street, back to 55th Street. I've never been far, okay? And the same 100 block between Race and Arch. I went from living and I've been there my whole four years and I've been there <laughs> all that time. <laughs> and when I was there, it was just where, where people go, where are you from? I say West Philly. That was first. Then they say, where are you from? I was like, well, you know, near 56 and market. OK, then it was like, where are you from? Then I learned they called it Haddington. OK, I live in Haddington. Then one day I remember sitting at home. My girlfriend from Chicago had just graduated law school and she was moving here. She got a job. She called me up. Girl, why didn't you tell me? That you live in Center City West. I said, well, I do. <laughs> That's what, what wait, is. Center City West? Center City West. Oh, they, they changed the they changed the boundaries on stuff because now they didn't change the boundary on the University of Penn Zone. So that all of a sudden, I went from living just in, in West Philly to 56 and Mark to, to near the 56 and Market to Haddington. Then I lived in uni, in the in the University of Penn catchment area. And all that meant is that you can use those non uh non amortizing i think that's the right non amortizing loans that university of penn was giving out so what they're trying oh, yeah, to do yeah yeah uh, the 60th street actually so what they're yeah. trying to do is if you go to the school if you work there they'll give you these these loans that don't amortize because they've got to stabilize the neighborhood for all the kids that move in so they can make it safe and so by doing that, they expand where you get University of Penn services. So then one day I looked up and the Penn police were responding to something that happened at my corner. And I was very confused. So it's like, OK. And then I got a call from my girlfriend and she said, you didn't tell me you live in Center City West. Now, please note that I have never moved. <laughs> Just please note this. <laughs> Okay, I'm still in the same place, uh, but it is yes. I, you know, I just want you to know I'm very hot for Luton now because I live in Center City West. There you go. Just in case you wanted to know, I don't know. Like I said, I, I still live on 55th Street, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> so yes, the the real estate is definitely something, and you know, to that end, the we have buying houses people um are always on uh, my seniors, and you know, on myself, and I'll give you an example. So. When I bought my house on 53rd Street, it was the first non-family transfer that had happened on that block in close to 30 years. So as a as a result, there was never um, a, a comparable value. They couldn't give comp on the neighborhood because nobody had all they, they were all dollar transfers. Like everybody on my block is second and third generation on that block on 53rd Street. OK. And so mine was the first house that had sold. And the neighbors knew what it was on the market for um, and were freaking out because they were worried about the new tax assessment that was going to happen mm. as a result of the first non-family transfer on the block. But that's OK, because they didn't know I was a lawyer before I got there. And I helped them all make sure that they got locked into their appraisal rates for their houses. And, you know, back from the initial transfers in 1937. So, you know, so, so they're kind of locked in, but that becomes an issue. So then you have, um, you know, so as a result, what I get, they call me all the time. So somebody offered me thirty five thousand dollars for my house and it's cash. And I'm like thirty five thousand dollars. And then we had a house sell at the corner for 300 and then they started to understand. Mm. And then they started to understand, but it took that actual sale, not mine. Cause my sale was 15, 16, 17. What year is it? 19 years ago. They, my sale was 19 years ago. So, um, but that was, that sale was uh, last summer for close to $300,000. And that was the first time that they understood um, what is going on in our neighborhoods and why we have to be so careful about uh, where we value our own property. You know, I have another girlfriend lives around the corner and the the property or at the end of her block that had been, you know, an abandonment had been there forever. All of a sudden somebody is rehabbing it and they put it on the market for $315,000. And, we, you know, we're just very confused. But I told her, I said, it's because we now live in Center City West. This is what's happening. This is what you got to do when you live there. 
So now the question is back to you, David. So how are you going to sell, you know, my allegedly $300,000 value property in Center City West over here uh, in the age of COVID? So By following <laughs> the guidelines that was placed before us. That's how. So now this was the other one. Establish protocols if the business has been exposed to probable or confirmed case of COVID-19. You have to keep the office clean. So they're doing uh, they're only doing appointment only. Um, if you come in, you have to wear a mask and you have to keep your uh, place of business clean. Just like you have to keep the house that you're showing clean. And then also, allegedly, everything's supposed to actually occur outside. Like you like you literally supposed to look at the house and get out. No, I. Uh, yes, they want you to be in and they want you to be out. They want to cut down on exposure. I spoke to a lady today um, from the CDC and she told me, yeah, I have a client coming in to drop off some paperwork. I said, okay. She said, I'm not supposed to be here in the office, but I'm here to get the paperwork. She said, I'm going to allow the young lady to pull up, pull down her window. I'm going to grab her paperwork. I'm going to run in the office. I'm going to photocopy and give it back to her. That's, that's the way people are doing business now. Well, it's a good thing you're a cyclist and a good fit dude there, uh, David, because you're going to be doing a lot, a lot of running. So I got two questions down here. We're going to come to Willie second because um, this is something that we've actually addressed already. But I, I, I saw this and I don't know what this is. Zahira, like the new section of South Philly now being named New Bold. Where is New Bold? Where new is Bold. that? South have Philly. South Philly. I know. but Have you heard of it? Uh, no, I haven't. Child, they called something Soho. I forgot where that was in North Philly. They they called it Soho. I'm so confused. So we talked about this, Willie. So, um, Zahira, if you can let me I know have it right here. Talking. It says Brewer Street on East to 18th Street, West to Washington Avenue. So I think it's the area where 18th we call Street it Washington be where, the, where the, um, uh, the Target, the Target the right there, Broad in Washington. Yes. Well, I mean, of course Actually, that's New Bold. They got a Target yes. there. There's a bullseye on it. There you go. <laughs> he said it's Federal A. <laughs> you know, I'm just, you got to rename it. They got a Target. I'm just saying, okay? I mean, that's the rule. When Target come, you know, next thing, and, I, and they got one of them mom's uh, produce places. So, you know, that's fancy. Oh, she said they divided the Point Breeze section. Oh, okay. So one section is New Bold and the other one is just Point Breeze. Okay. Federal Street. Okay, Federal A. So now you know you got to get up on this rail. 40, 45 and 46. You said what? 19145 and 19146. So, but we're going to go back here, um, Willie, because we have actually talked about this on this show before. Are the pricing for housing going to drop because of COVID-19? Okay, so let's go back to the supply and demand. And people say, is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? Inventory right now in Philadelphia is very low. Mm -hmm. Low inventory means there's not a lot of choices. So, as me being Mr. Seller, do I have to drop my prices or can I let y'all fight it out to give me the best price that I want? And that's exactly what it is. People think, oh, I'm going to get a great deal. It's not much inventory. It's not a lot of houses to sell. So, um, and let me expand upon that a little bit more. So, Willie, when you took, so yes, is actually the real answer, but in Philadelphia, the answer is no. So let me explain <laughs> why that is. So when you're talking about the sprawl, the answer is yes, because there's actually much more inventory the further you go out. What exactly. we know, out what there. we know in Philadelphia is that we are 200,000 uh, housing units short of those folks who live and work in Philadelphia proper. 200,000, yep. we're short on housing stock. Okay. However, if you go to Tredeferin, if you want to drive to Phoenixville and Collegeville and any place named Ville every day and be an hour, like, yeah, be an hour plus away from Center City, they got plenty of houses. And though they're expecting those properties to drop 20 to 30 percent in value. As a matter of fact, um, and I'm sure that Dave knows this, 
um, you know, because he's the Delaware expert and he always trying to get me to move to Smyrna. And you actually see it there. I see that, the, that now, you know, before I could only get a mini mansion, you know, for my half million, it basically looked like a mansion now for my half million. When I see it, I just like, I mean, you know, I mean, if I can get, uh, you know, two more bedrooms and a jacuzzi, I want two more bedrooms and a jacuzzi. So, 4,000 square feet. That's all you need. Yeah. I need how much? 4,000 square feet. There you everything. go. I live in West Philly. 1,000 square feet to do me. I'm quite fine with that. I'm, I'm quite <laughs> just me. Me and, and I don't even have a dog. I don't even have a dog. It's just me. We're going from one room to the next. Okay. And these four mm -hmm. walls have sufficed me for 63 days of being in the house. Week 10. It's week 10. Uh, Bussy, thank you from DKOD, reminding me to remind you all that we still have five days that you can request your ballot. So if you want to participate in this here process, you know that we have an election coming up uh, and we cannot. And I think y'all see what happens when we stay home. I don't even I don't even really need to go there. People keep saying, oh, you know, what does it matter? What does it matter? Y'all see what it matters because y'all see what's happened with this pandemic and not just in the White House, but locally. Here we are. We having our fourth, fifth conversation with Dave about how we're going to handle, you know, the housing market, real estate, handling COVID-19. Those are the rules that are coming in from our state legislature. And those are the offices that are actually up for grabs and that we're voting on in this here election. The Auditor General, people don't even know what the Auditor General does, but he will tell me, well, you know, mom's in a nursing home and I couldn't get PCA. Well, you know what, P PCA? Who, who audits those books and make sure they're providing services for all their contractor? The Auditor General. You know, the AG's office, uh, that won't really be contentious until um, the fall. But right now here in this primary, the state seats are up and uh, most of the state senators are up. These congressional seats are up and these state representative seats are up. So your voice definitely can be heard. And how can you do that? If you decide that it's not safe for you to actually make the trek to the polls, then you can still get your, your ballot by registering online for it. So all the folks over here on DKOD, thank you so much. They are reminding me to remind you, go to www.vote190.com, vote190.com. If you need your ballot, it, you can just go there. It'll give you all the requirements and specifications for what you need to do. But you only got till Monday. But why should we wait till Monday? Do it now. Do it today. Y'all done heard the folks come on this show and they told you how long it's taking them to get these ballots. So you don't want to wait to the last minute because you don't want to be left out. And you sure don't want to request your ballot and then, then be at the polling place on election day casting your provisional. You want to do everything you can do. The other thing I'm going to tell you folks, if you're mailing in your ballot, take a picture of it. Take a picture of the day that you were at the mailbox putting it in because you want to be able to show that you mailed it. OK, just in case there's any contention, if you're requesting your ballot and you have to do it by mail, take a picture of you mailing that request so that you have some kind of documentation that you have it. Because if you go online, you get that online. It's tracked. But if you're doing it through the regular mailbox, that's a way that you can record it for yourself. Take a picture of it. Hey, if you want to, you're online, post to the Facebook. Facebook timestamps everything. And it stands up in court, as we know. That it does, you know, just the lawyer telling you that it stands up in court because we do use your Facebook post against you. Just ask anybody who's been divorced lately because they didn't got caught with their side joint on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> what? <laughs> I find that one very funny. Well, it's the truth. You know how, <laughs> you very... know how many Instagram pictures I done been in court with? Okay. How many Facebook posts we done been? I can't move and I got you dropping it like it's hot on video on Facebook. So, I mean, we know <laughs> that Facebook will stand up in court. So take a picture of it. Post it on Facebook. Say, I requested my ballot today. Mm -hmm. Tag me, Danielle Patterson for 190th. Yeah, tag us and share. Let us know, Danielle <laughs> Patterson for 190th. But you can go over to vote190.com, vote190.com, and you're going to do it online. Make sure that you get your confirmation number. To do that, you need an email address. 
So mm. <laughs> and since Dave is still cracking up at me, you know, I mean, look, I didn't drop all the wisdom that lets you know that I'm high cotton, Willie Singletary. I have not heard that since my mama passed. So now there you go. I'm high cotton because I didn't moved over to, you know, uh, University City. You know, I'm moving on up in the world. Uh, we know uh, all about wet signatures and how to get our new notaries. Um, we also, hey, I got to get back to you. So this has been coming to me and I know it's not your forte, but I know that it impacts what you're doing because we're talking about these housing um, rates. And how about this? They are dinging everybody's credit for these forbearances on these mortgages and student loans. Hey, you know, Danielle, I'm, I'm hearing conflicting stories about that. And I've been doing a lot more research on it. First, I heard that they was. Then I heard that they're not. Um, I'm, I'm, the verdict is still out on that. Um, I've been following it a lot because you have a lot of people who filed the forbearances. And first, I heard that they was. And then Fannie Mac and Freddie uh, said that they wasn't going to do it. So it's, it's not very, I haven't saw the clear information on it. Well, let me tell you, it really depends on your lender. And it actually it didn't really have to do with the lenders. The credit report, the I speak English, slow down. The credit re reporting bureaus were doing it automatically. It had nothing to do with folks oh. saying, it. yes, they were just doing it automatically, which is why, David, they need to go to which one is it so they can fix annualcreditreport.com. You can check your credit report once a week until April 2021. It's very, very important. Annualcreditreport.com. Go there today. You can get all three credit bureaus. I Once keep saying that I'm going to go check mine, but I'm kind of busy running for office. But on June 3rd, I'm probably asleep. On June 15th, <laughs> I'm going to just be honest, I'm probably still be asleep. But I'm getting to it. I'm going to check because uh, too many of my constituents, that is the thing. You know, so uh, Joshua, Joshua down there. So, oh, because we didn't talk about YouTube University. But basically, I'm one of them folks. So I give you all all this great advice and then don't do it myself because I'm too busy fixing your stuff. So I didn't pull my credit report, but I pulled somebody else's and was helping them do a fair credit reporting act action. That's what they actually are called. Um, if you need assistance with that, you can't get it off. Give a give my office a call at 267-291. 4702-267-291-4702. I want you to know that um, because, uh, again, uh, we actually have um, attorneys who are volunteering to do these actions. They're what they call declaratory actions. You don't have to do anything. They just file them. And then what happens is mysteriously it comes off your credit report. Um, you know, one of the things, Danielle, about that also, I have a lot of people who, uh, for example, they want to apply for the $10,000 um first time home buyer program that Philadelphia is given. Mm -hmm. One thing, they don't have the credit score. So I'm telling them, yes, you can go to a credit repair person, but you should take the first step and be proactive. Go to annual credit report. Look at what's on there. You never know. It might be some duplicates that you can get off, but at least take the first step before you walk to someone else and try to just start paying money, which you really don't have because you would have paid the bills that's on there, correct? Second thing is the $10,000 first time home buyer program in Philadelphia. A lot of people are saying they want to sign up for it. I want everyone to keep this in mind. You have to stay in the house for 15 years for it to be forgiven. If you decide to move out, you have to repay that. So just I never knew this. Nobody ever told me this. Absolutely. 15 years, you have to stay in there. There's a way that they're trying to uh, stimulate um, the city of Philadelphia housing market. 15 years. And they, they'll give you the 10000 but you have to stay. So a lot of people say, oh, this is just going to be my starter home. Well, when you go to sell that property, you have to pay it back. If you stay for 15, it's forgiven. That's fabulous information. Thank you, David. See, like I told you, everybody, I got the smartest people on my timeline. Because, you know, I, I never met David before or any of that kind of stuff. I just found him on social media and just said, hey, come on over here. You know, you look like you'll be interesting. <laughs> um, but and now finally, let's talk about these folks from YouTube University coming in to uh, fix your house. And I'm really concerned about us, especially right now, because there there's actually a grant from PGW. 
going around right now that you need to apply for. Uh, you know, the LAHIP applications are in, but now PCA is concerned about the safety of seniors in homes. And so, we, you know, Jack Leg uh, folks are going to come out and talk about your steps, steps and talk about uh, your railings. And you need to make sure that they really know how to do these things um, because otherwise you can do damage to your property. Uh, Cause Dave loves to, to post these things and I kill myself laughing every time. So let's talk about that, Dave. How do you actually know whether or not the person that you're using is actually like, you know, qualified to do these things? Well, the first place that you can start is the city of Philadelphia website. They actually have a list of licensed and insured and bonded contractors. That's the first place. That you can do. Everybody says that nobody knows what it means. They have a bond. So sometimes they have a million dollar bond just in case they get sued. They actually have a, um, a policy attached to their company. And I'm looking up the website. Okay. So that's the first thing. Um, and check right there. Uh, a high percentage of the guys that's posting uh, pictures on social media don't have the contractor's license. Um, you can actually um, check. For example, you were saying about the PGW. They're doing, uh, I don't know about that, but what, where, what was they doing? Uh, PGW, when they were doing, because uh, we had a, a series in West Philadelphia issue with the gas leaks. So, okay. so let's yeah. say, for example, you needed something done with gas You're work. Doing caps over right. in, in West Philadelphia, or you right. can, and uh, you can pay for them yourself. You can pay for them yourself, or, you know, to get it capped off, or the city would do it, depending upon what your income was. Yeah. So with that, Let's say if you was to hire someone and they have to pull a permit, the city of Philadelphia has an app is the 311 app. You can actually download it to your phone. I use it often. Um, if you told me you were selling your house and you have plumbing work done and my guy pulled a permit, I can pull up my phone. I can go to 311, put in your address. It showed me if uh, a permit was pulled. So you want to make sure y'all down there. I want you to know this because I spent all my time doing this for my neighbors. If you need got an abandoned car in front of your house, call three one one and do it. Sorry, do it on the use, app. Use the app. Receipt, yes. Get a receipt for it, and they have to respond. Respond. So it's not like when you call in, you actually have a receipt for it. You'd be amazed at how much faster the you know the car mysteriously disappeared from in front of your house. Okay, so if you go to philadelphia.gov, um, you can use Google. They have a whole section, find a licensed contractor, and they have the name of everyone. They have the license number. All of their paperwork was submitted to the city of Philadelphia. It's right here online. Um, I don't know if you can do it from the 311 app, but I would actually go to the website to actually find these things out. And this and is important because now this is when I get it on my end. Folks, I want to sue so-and-so and so-and-so because this didn't go right with my house. And they want to put, I want to put a mechanics lien on it. And a mechanics lien is when somebody does a repair for you, a mechanic, and it's done incorrectly. And then you can put a lien on their business, basically. But then you find out there was no business. So, yes. And that's very important because it's a protection for you later on. When you go to the website, uh, it actually break it down. Um, contractors, demolition, design, electric, uh, inspectors, engineers. The whole list is right here. You need um, fire alarm inspectors, fire suppression, uh, master plumber. So that's a great start right there. And we are now actually we've been over time for about five minutes. But, you know, it's always fun when you're on Dave, you know, the person I don't know, you know, <laughs> that I just made up. There you go. Um, but hey, uh, Dave. Yeah. Did you reach out to our Philadelphia program to get some seniors, some some students in to help you this summer through the grant program? Because the last day to register is tomorrow. Uh, no, I didn't. But I'm sure you're going to give me the information. And I'm yeah, going to do I'm going to give you the information um, and we're going to post it online to make sure that none of us miss it. Tomorrow is the deadline. So let me just tell you about the program again, because, of course, I didn't like wrote all over the paper. and I can't read. Uh, um, and 
but it's through the Urban Affairs Coalition. So it's, you know, at UAC.gov. Um, you can go and get the application. But for all of my, and I'm telling all my business owners, you can have, you can mentor a student this summer. I'm looking for some folks in some different areas um, so that the, the, the city, their program will actually pay the students all. And you can have two students, three students, three students for every supervisor. So, Dave, if you are the realtor, you're the supervisor, but you have another realtor in your office. You could have six students and they will and you can stagger them. You can do three in the morning, three in the evening, in the afternoon, you know, because mm -hmm. they have limits on how much time they can work. They will handle the work permits and everything. But it's an opportunity to expose our youth to some different um, kinds of things, not just, you know, the, the summer jobs that we normally can get. Mentorship is important and it is real. And so this is what I mean when I say I'm horrible because I got the application, pulled it down and did not sign it. Cause yes, they that like, yeah, I, that's exactly right. I didn't sign it. So um, I got the reminder before we came on that tomorrow is the deadline. So I got to make sure that I get that in because I'm really looking forward to my students. It'll be um, July, Monday, whatever the Monday at the, the 4th of July is. So what's that date they gave it to me? The 6th, Monday, July 6th through August mm -hmm. the 15th. You'll have the kids for six weeks. Um, they're going to be a little bit flexible about it because we don't know what's going on there. They can do virtual things. So for you, um, you know, you could have your apprentice and that could be who goes down and pairs the house before the folks come in to come to see it. Maybe that helps with the staging of the property. Um, also, it's an opportunity to expose them to what it takes, not just to, to sell the house, but also how to identify the structural defects. Stupid things like people that want to take the covers off of um, light fixtures and off of electrical. Like This is like a whole new thing. Why does nobody have the covers on the socket? I don't know why this is like a thing. Is I don't know. Yeah, there you go. So Zahira Zah says she got eight kids in her family that are in, in, that are registered and waiting to work. Yes, we're trying I'm, to I'm definitely you. gonna fill out the information uh, as soon as we get done. Yes. So again, I'm trying to call out to my friends in some of these more diverse uh, things. I don't want I, you know. Again, as I I tell you all the time, is this. When I started working, I didn't have, you know, my, my parents were not named Rockefeller or Gates, okay? They just straight up people from West Philly. So as, and you know, when I got to law school, I was at top of my class and had had more trouble getting jobs than other folks did and couldn't figure out how people were barely passing and they getting into these great law firms until I realized that the people's name on the door was McMahon and their name was McMahon too. You know, it's like, wait a minute. That's why I can't find a job because, you know, Betty Dowdy and Alfonso Patterson were not lawyers and they didn't have any ends. So we got to not just make sure that they are work ready. We got to make sure they got mentors. And I think you'd be a great mentor. You can get out there, get them out there cycling and everything, Dave. And you can take pictures while you do it. And I'll be watching. Thank you very much. I definitely will. As soon as you send me the information now. I will. I'm as soon as we get off because I got to forward the email. Um, but I just want to remind everybody that this is Danielle Patterson, candidate for state rep. So West Philly, baby, uh, calling out all my friends and family, reminding you that you have five days to go to www.vote190.com, www.vote190.com. If you need a fabulous realtor in PA or New Jersey or sorry, or Delaware. Yeah, that's right. He always wants to Smyrna. See, y'all see this? He want me, he want to take me away from West Philly. He want me to move to Smyrna. Um, you can hit up Dave at Integrity Realty. And what's the name? What's the number down there, Dave? 215-849-1111. If you know anyone looking to buy, sell, rent, or invest in residential or commercial real estate in Pennsylvania, Delaware, please give me a call. I just realized you didn't put up your um your banner. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, I don't know what's wrong here because usually I had to do all that. So there you go. Dave Foster, 215-849-1111 at Integrity Real Estate. This is Danielle Patterson reminding you that we will do better together.